Hey guys, I'm Ryan, and today I'm going to be showing you how I set up this taskers over here. For, for my next video, I have this timer. I will show you how to set up in the next video, but for now, let's just focus on the task list. But before that, I would like to recommend installing Visual Studio Code that will make the editing of the files much easier and easier to read. Just go to code.visualstudio.com to install it. Next, this link, all the links will be provided in the description below. This is the code for my overlay, of, of the task overlay. So, you just, to download it, you just need to click on this green button here, and click on download zip. After that, you should see it in your downloads here, and I'm gonna extract it into the folder that I want. After extracting the zip file, you open Visual Studio Code and you'll be met with this page here, something similar to this. You see a purple bar at the bottom, that means you haven't opened the folder. So what you need to do is click on this top left icon that looks like a stack of paper. Click on open folder and open the folder which contains the code for the task overlay. After, after clicking what you need, the most important setup process here is the off.js So it, under channel, you need to put in your channel name For me, it's Ryan Python And you're probably not sure how to select both of these So let me show you that When you go to gettoken.exe, you'll see that you need to put in a client ID To get to the client ID, you need to open dev.twitch.tv here on dev.twitch.tv, I recommend logging into your alt account, the account that you're not streaming on, the account that you want your bot username to be appeared as. So for me, for me, I call the account Ryan's bot. And over here, you have to register an application on the right side. On, on the name, you can put in any name you want. For example, I'll put in uh, Ryan bot tutorial or task bot tutorial. And under OAuth redirect URL, you need to put in localhost http colon slash slash localhost. In the category, select chatbot and verify that you're not a robot. And create an application like that. After you created an application, you need to click on manage and obtain the client ID here. After obtaining the client ID, you can open your Visual Studio Code and paste the client ID here. After pasting it here, you can highlight the whole URL, open your browser, click on a new tab and paste it in here. You have to authorize, authorize all this, click on this button here, and you'll be redirected, redirected very shortly. It looks like you did something wrong, right? But don't worry, the access, if you did everything correctly, you'll see an access token at the top here. Just double click here, and make sure you highlight after the equal sign right before the ampersand. After that, you obtain the auth token, so you can complete your setup process here. Put in your, paste in your OAuth on this line, and then put in your bot's username here. Okay. After that, your, after that, you open OBS. Open OBS under under sources. You can open a new browser source. I'll add tutorial, and it would be. And you have to take local file, browse, and I'll browse to the folder and click on index.js 
have to click on index.js, you'll see that it's working. It should work. Let's see. Let me test it on my Twitch chat. And and try out a command. I can do exclamation mark. Exclamation mark task, and put in an example task like this is a test. Hmm. It opened twice because I have two browser overlays right now. I have one. I have, for you it should work because I have two overlays here that are reading each other simultaneously, reading the chat simultaneously, but. This proves that it works. So let me just remove this overlay real quick. So if you're watching this, you're setting up with me, you probably have a blank list and you want to customize it somehow. Instead of asking your friends to put in the task they want or spamming the chat and open your virtual studio code. Not my mom. And go all the way down to tasklist.js. Under tasklist.js, you can put in, you can uncomment these. You can remove the slash slash here, and you could see. Several tasks there, and you can use that for reference. Okay, back to the video. This whole settings might seem a little intimidating, but if you get used to it, it's gonna be fine. So I'll just do a quick rundown of the of every setting here. So the slash slash here is just a comment. It won't be processed by the code. It won't pro be processed as code. It will be it will just be ignored after you put slash slash. So over here show them tasks that means whether you want your task to be displayed after it's been completed or do you want to remove it if you want it to be displayed after it, that it has been completed you put true otherwise you put false like this show task number that means you see the task number on the top right of the task list if you don't want to display that you can put false then cross tasks on done that means if you want to line through after you've completed your task maybe i'll put true here and show checkbox i'll put false so if i save the file using Control s or command s and i refresh the task list you'll see that some stuff has changed The reason why many tasks disappeared here is because I put show done tasks as false. So I don't want to display any task that, that is completed. So let me change that back and refresh. And as you can see, many things. The customizations are overall easier if I if I put cross tasks on done you can see all the completed tasks has a line through it and let's explore more if you want to change the font you can go to fonts.google.com and choose a font that you like over here say I choose Rubato and Montserrat I like those two fonts so let's change it for the header font, I prefer it to be uh, Roboto and for the body font family, I prefer Montserrat. I'll just save, refresh, and you can see the font changed. The header is Roboto and the task below it is all Montserrat. I prefer to show the 
last number, so I'll just change that real quick. And you can see the last number has also changed font. I'm doing real first here. So moving on, let's see the scroll. Scroll linear taskless scroll behavior as linear. That means that you want a constant speed as it goes down and goes up. It'll be the same speed. If I don't want that and I want it to be slow in the beginning and slow at the end, but scroll at a faster speed in the middle, you can do east in out. And let me refresh. You can see it's slow in the beginning and in the middle it goes a little faster and just slowly reach the bottom or get slower again. I feel like this is a little too slow so let's increase the pixels per second which just originally set to 30. Let's change it to 70 just to see how fast it can go. And it'll go back up and then slow down again. Let's keep that. And in the task list, you added the width and height of that of the task list here. So maybe I want it to be thinner. If I want it thinner, I put a lower value for the task list width. Let's refresh. And you can see it gets thinner. If I want it shorter, then I reduce the value of task list height. Tasklist background color refers to the entire tasklist background color. I don't. I put the opacity at zero, so so any value I put here is just basically useless. If you want it to be visible, you need to put it to one. It's like an opaque, opaque color instead of a fully transparent one. And currently it's black. You need to put in a hexadecimal value here. So let's try white color just so you guys can see and the background of the task list is white color that's not the border that's literally the color of the background of the task list i prefer not that to not have that so i'll put it back to zero refresh and it's transparent again the task list border color refers to the border of the entire task list. Right now I put it at zero width so you don't see any border in the first place. But if I put a width of five pixels, you can see that there's a big border around the task list here. And the border radius isn't, it shouldn't really affect the, it's not really affected by the previous two variables here. It's just saying how round you want the task list to be. So if I put a larger value, you can see that the task list got a lot more round. Got round or so. Let me put it back to 10. And I prefer to not have a border in the first place. So I put the border width to zero. The header height refers to the height of the header. Self-explanatory. <laughs> so if I want it taller, I'll just increase the height. And you can see the header got a little taller. I wish I did. I wish I was. And if I decrease the height, it'll get shorter. So let's put it at 60. The header background color will be black color and the opacity is 0.9 so you can put in any values between 0 and 1 it doesn't have to be 0 or 1 you can put in anything in between such as 0.95 and i can put in 0.3 which makes it barely visible but I prefer to put it at 0 
that means black color but with 90% opacity so so it, you can still see through it just somewhat barely the header border color currently it's white color and it has a width of 2 pixels so if I increase the value of the pixels you can see the border got a little thicker and if I change the value of the border radius it gets more round I guess the larger the value the more rounder it is the header font size it's pretty self-explanatory the header font size does not affect the the task number though it's a, there's a separate variable for that down here task number font size so you can see the task count got larger there so that's not too bad and the font color which is the color of the text i can change it to pink if i wanted to the header padding refers to the it's better if i just demonstrate it if i put no padding at all you can see that it sort of sticks to the side like there's no space if you want space then you want padding it gives more space vertically and horizontally and the task number font size as i mentioned previously is the font size of the it's pretty self-explanatory the font size of the task number which is the number at the top right and let's put back to 30 you'll learn by clapping your ass you'll learn by getting your ass clapped You're now moving on to the body if you see You're not my mom. on the read me here you see that over here the top part here refers to the header and everything else bottom here is the body and if you want to affect the, both at the same time it's the task list up here so task list header body the background color is set to white but i put the opacity at zero so it doesn't really matter what value i put here because it's going to be transparent either way and i put the font color as white color so if i change to pink it doesn't change anything maybe i could remove this this one's useless ignore that one the bo body border color refers to this thing you're a new friend i think i ignore that one just now if I put it to 2 pixels, you can see it reduce the border, then change the color real quick. So you see the pink, that pink gives a border around the body, but not the entire task list, not including the header, just the body part only. And the body radius. The border radius, as I mentioned several times before, it refers to how round you want the body to be. So if I put 3 pixels, you can see... If I put the larger the value, the more rounder it gets. If I put 50, you can see it's very round. I don't like that, so I prefer to not have border in the first place. The individual, the task here refers to the each individual tasks. What does that mean? Well, it refers to you can see each individual task actually has its own border, its own division. That's what they say in HTML. So let's go through the settings here. The number of lines is set to two. So if I set it to one, it won't. If I set it to one. It won't overflow. It will over. It will cut. Sorry. It won't create a new line at the bottom. It will just stop at one line. If it overflows, then it will just put a bunch of ellipses after that. And if I put three, you can see any any long tests. 
Okay, where was I? I was explaining individual tasks. So, the number of lines I want to say, let me try to put in an example task. Uh, remove my previous task. I'm gonna put in exclamation mark task. So I put in a very long task to demonstrate what the number of lines means. So since I put three lines and when you go to the bottom, you can see that it stops at three lines. And Yeah, it stops at three lines, so if I prefer to put it at either one or two to prevent overflow, if I put one, it feels more satisfying and doesn't look all that cramped. Next is the task background color. I put it as black color and with a capacity of 0 0.8. The task font size refers to the font size of the task. The task font color, the border color, everything, it's pretty self-explanatory. The margin bottom, let's talk about that one. So let me put the border color as white color and a border width of 2 for a better visualization. So you can see the tasks are pretty close to each other. Say I want, I want it to be more spaced out. I just have to edit the margin bottom to a larger value. So currently as it's separated by 5 pixels, let's increase that to 20. And you can see it's even more spaced out than before. And the task padding refers to the padding inside the task. So if I wanted if I wanted to have space within the task, I can put in 20 and you can see that each task got a little taller, but the task font didn't change. So padding refers to how much space given top, left, bottom, right for the text. Next, let's talk about the checkbox. Right now, I don't have the checkbox enabled. Let me just enable that. We're just under show checkbox. If I put false, then it will show the bullet points. If I show if I put true, then it will show the text box, the checkbox. And you can see the check checkbox over there. It's fine right now, but let's say if I want it bigger, I want the box to be bigger, I, I change the size of this. And you can see the checkbox got bigger. And the background color, I didn't set one, but if I want it to be, say, pink, Oh, it can be hex only, so you gotta be careful of that. Mm, I want it to be red color, so I put the standard color for hex and I change the opacity to 1. You should see the background color of the checkbox changed. The border color refers to the color of the box, the border box, and can change the width and the border width and border radius. The border radius refers to how round the box is, as mentioned several times before. The checkbox margin top refers to the margin top of the margin top refers to how much space do I want to give it above. It's almost like padding, but but there's a distinct difference between margin and padding. Margin is like, I want this much space above me. And padding top refers to... <laughs> Never mind, I'm not gonna explain CSS right now. Margin top refers to how much space I want above me. So if I put it at 30, you can see it should go down. It goes down. Okay, the margin depth is how much space I want 
on my left. So I, put, I can put five pixels, and you. If I put fifty pixels, you see an obvious obvious space bit on the left of the checkbox. Refresh, you see many a big space. You know, so let me just change back. And margin right is the same, but say I feel like the checkbox is a little too close to the username, but I want more distance from that. I, I increase the value of checkbox margin right to say 10 pixels. Mm, that's not a very obvious difference, so there we go. Now there's a bigger space between the username and the checkbox. Now the tick character will only appear when the task is done. I can put in... Yeah, be careful here because you need the double quotes on the outside and the single quotes on the inside for this to work. I could go to Wikipedia and look for a different tick character to appear. You could put in a heart shape, you can put in like a pineapple. A pineapple when your task is complete. Up to you. You can put an emoji. What are you on? And the tick size, it refers to how big the check mark should be. So if I put it at 30, like it's not big enough. You can see that it increased in size, but the position is all wrong. So let's change that. And the tick color, I can put in like pink and so I change that, it might not work on emojis or other special characters. And translate the Y is how we're gonna fix it. So the larger the value is gonna go, it'll go up. So I put 10 pixels. It should go up. Let me let me trial and error this. Yeah, higher. Too high. 17 and there uh i think that's good enough but let's change this back to white so it looks more pleasing and that could potentially work yeah i'm just gonna change it back to four i forgot the original text size nope 18. There you go. Let me change it back to a pink tick. There you go. And bullet point. If you want a, to show a bullet point instead of a checkbox, you have to put false here. And you can put in any character you want. You can you can put in an emoji even so. What's the sunflower emoji? I forgot. I can put in a dash. And um, or change the dash. I can put in like a plus. You don't need the single quotes inside for this one. I can put in a plus and it'll change to a plus. And I feel like the plus is too small, so let's increase it. Mm, increase it. Yeah. And then margin top, I can. I feel like. Hmm. I might need to fix that. So for the margin top, this. How much space I want it above the bullet point. So if I increase it to 10, you can see that. It goes lower. If I put increase the value here, it'll have more space on the left on the bullet point. And margin right, you see the distance between the username and the bullet point increase. And then 
And then finally, we have the colon. The colon is between the username and the task. Colon, margin, left. Let's say I want more space between the username and the colon. I just do this and you can see the colon has been spaced out. And if you want the, there to be more space between the colon and the task, you increase. And as you can see here, that's all. That's the customizations you can put. And down here you have the commands. That's the, just now we, I guess we breeze through what each of these customizations mean. If you have any more recommendations, feel free to comment below. Add task commands say someone, someone, there are many different tasks on Twitch, okay? It's hard to get used to all of them. So why not just make a list of the, of the commands from different task, task list, task bots, task overlays, whatever. I do exclamation mark tasks. Some other streamers prefer exclamation mark add task. Some prefer exclamation mark to do. There are many different task lists out there. So it's, it'll be more convenient if you just accept all of them. And this for task delete. You do exclamation mark delete to remove the previous task. The edit task, which I didn't have in my previous task overlay. You can just like, instead of removing and then adding again, you can just do exclamation mark edit. If you suddenly want to change your current task that you have right now. Say you did your statistics on, you're trying to do your statistics on work and then realize, oh, there's a bug on the overlay. And then you just do exclamation mark. Exclamation mark edit. Mm. Exclamation mark edit fix overlay. And it'll be edited there. Check commands refers to like I forgot what my previous task was. And there are many tasks already in the task list, so I have to wait almost forever to see what my previous task is and I might just this out so I can do this convention mark check and then it'll say like oh your current task is fix overlay if you're a mod and you don't even need to be a mod you see your friend has a task on there but you didn't really catch what they're doing right now you can do exclamation mark task say above and exclamation mark ping the person That's not, that shouldn't be correct. Oh, because they completed the task, therefore it's false. And who hasn't completed their task? Hmm, sure. I found something to fix in the task list now. Uh, by the time this release, I probably fixed that command already. And then, uh, help command admin delete command so I, if I see someone put in like hey that's not a good task I just put exclamation mark adel that's the shortest one admin delete and it will delete the other user's task admin clear done you just do that and all the completed tasks will be disappeared at admin clear all that refers to the command that will clear every single task in the task list so be careful here are the responses, if you want to customize it. If you watched this far, thank you. Thank you for using my task list. Thank you for considering to use my task list at least. So, that's it for today. Bye guys, see you next video. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow my Twitch on twitch.tv slash I hope this video helped you guys a lot. And thank you.